Okay. Well then, let's get started. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Dalwin Clark, and this morning I will be presenting the new Trulium Web uh, product. And before we get started, though, I have a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, I am going to be recording the training session, and we will be making it available for everybody to view uh, at, at their leisure. And if anybody can't make it to the training session, it will also be available uh, for them as well. Um, due to the number of participants that we have in this session, um, we ask that uh, you refrain from asking questions. What we will do instead is um, there is a chat window. If you have questions, please uh, enter those into the chat window, and I will retrieve them at the end of the session. I will collate them, and I will send responses to all of the participants. If you are having trouble with the uh, chat window, then send an email to me instead. Um, I would also ask uh, that you put your phones on mute as it's not going to be an interactive session. Uh, that way we won't have any interruptions when people leave or, or join the session. Um, <clears throat> star six, or if you have uh, a mute button, that will work also. I'm not looking at it as a participant, so uh, Al, can you uh, provide um, some assistance there? Is there not a, a control panel there that has a chat, um, a chat option? Give me a second. Let me just expand my chat. No, I didn't actually. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, yeah. Al, was that you who just sent? Do you see this, Della? Okay, I do see some questions coming in. Uh, yes, it will be recorded for viewing later. Okay, pardon? Okay, I do see several questions coming in. Yeah, okay. All right, so I see a lot of information here. Uh, okay, hopefully uh, this will work. Okay. Well, hopefully, now that we've gotten all of this stuff out of the way, we can get into the, uh, the nuts and bolts of the training session. Uh, before I get into the actual application, I just have a few uh, PowerPoint slides here that will give us an overview of the product itself. So we'll start with that, and then after that, we will get into the actual application. Uh, the purpose of the Trillium Web Initiative is to migrate current Trillium functionality to the web to provide access to all Trillium products via a common interface. So we're getting away from the traditional Power Builder application and we're migrating everything uh, over to the web. As functionalities and applications are migrated, they will be incorporated into the T-Web School Admin package. This will be a phased roll-in. Right now we have uh, two modules, we have the admin, uh, the attendance module and the incident tracking module and we'll be porting the rest of the uh, functionality and applications over, uh, as I mentioned, in a phase-in approach. 
Access to the modules is through a central landing or home page. We have a comprehensive online help system that's been built in to provide guidance on using the application, and I'll demonstrate that when we get into the actual application itself. Uh, in addition, boards will be able to subscribe to training videos that demonstrate in detail how to perform certain tasks. Some boards have uh, subscribed to our uh, training video libraries. We have three, Court Trillium, uh, Trillium Web Elementary Achievement, and Trillium Web Secondary Achievement. These training videos now that we're developing for this product are uh, now actually integrated into the product itself, and they're available through a licensing. To satisfy reporting needs, SRB has licensed the powerful and flexible JasperSoft reporting tool, which allows clients to view SRB-created reports as well as design their own. And we'll be looking at that again later on in the training session. Security for, for Trillium Web will be controlled and maintained through the existing approach of tasks and roles. So no changes there. Trillium Web has been designed to support mobile devices, for example, laptops and tablets, and it is also compliant with the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. And the application will run under the following browsers. I won't read them. You can see them there. You can see that there's support for uh, IE, Chrome, and Safari. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the application itself. And here we're looking at the new uh, Trillium Web product. The application is divided into roughly two parts. We have the application header at the top, and we have the data or uh, information pages below. Um, the application header contains the main menu, the name of the currently logged in user, a logout button, and the session timer. And uh, this should be very familiar to anybody who's used any of our, our products and web products in the past. Uh, the main menu, of course, provides access to the various modules and functions in the application. A down arrow next to a menu item indicates that that menu item contains sub-menu items. And the currently highlighted, uh, sorry, the uh, currently, um, the current page is what I'm trying to say is highlighted in uh, blue text. Right now we're looking at the landing page or the home page if you prefer. And this is divided into two sections. We have the favorite section and the announcement section. The favorite section basically functions the same as its core trillion counterpart. The purpose is to allow users to create shortcuts to the most commonly accessed uh, pages or functions. The section below is the Trillium Announcement section. The purpose of this section is to allow system administrators to, set, to send uh, notifications to users about things such as system maintenance and updates and so on. For example, you can see I have a um, sample message here that says that Trillium Web will be offline on December 7th from 4 to 6 p.m. for routine maintenance. Um, because this is intended for these types of messages, only system administrators should have access to the add, edit, and delete buttons, unlike the favorite section in which everybody should have access to those, uh, to those functions. <clears throat> Before I get into the attendance and incident tracking and reports modules, I'll have a look at the system menu. In here, we have options for changing the password and the color scheme. Changing the password, this is very similar to all of our other web applications. If you're using LDAP, of course, you would not see this. And the color scheme, we have several different color schemes here. Um, if I click on the system menu item itself. We have everything arranged here in these very nice looking colorful icons. The about button here will bring up information about the uh, application itself. Um, we have system information. This is just generally intended for troubleshooting purposes. You wouldn't generally come in here. This is mainly intended for 
um, support personnel. And in here we have the training videos. Right now we have five training videos and they're arranged uh, according to the specific modules. And here we have the landing page video. This video describes the structure and functionality of the Ecolia landing page. Okay, uh, that's enough of that guy. The next thing that we'll look at then is we'll have a look at the attendance module. At the top we have the attendance module. It's divided into pages according to the function. The first page by default is the individual attendance page. So we'll have a look at that first. In order to uh, work with students' attendance, because this is individual attendance, we have to find and select the student for whom we'll be recording attendance. There are two basic, uh, sorry, there are two methods for searching for students. We have a basic search, which is what you see here, and that's the one that's selected by default. And we have an advanced search method. The basic search method takes uh, a string of characters and searches for those characters anywhere within the student's full name, meaning the first and last name. The advanced uh, search function expands upon that by giving options for searching by preferred or legal name. It also breaks the name out into the student's surname and full name. We have options for searching by enrollment status, ID numbers such as student number, the OEN, gender, and grade. I will perform a basic search. I will just search for one letter, A. And matching uh, names are shown in the search results pane. We have a scroll bar here that allows you to scroll up and down. And notice that uh, students who have medical concerns have a medical alert icon next to their name. And sheltered students will also have a notifier next to their names. So in order to work with a student, simply select the student from the list by clicking on the student's name. The right side of the screen will refresh to show the information for the selected student. We have some personal information about the student, such as the student's name, the track, grade, and so on. Notice that uh, we also have the medical alert icon, and if you have Enable attendance alerts within Corkfilm itself. The alert indicator will show up in this section also. Students' photographs will show up here as well. Information on the page is uh, categorized under section headings, and these section headings uh, operate in accordion fashion which means that they expand and they contract whenever you click on a section heading. Only one section will be expanded at any given time. So if I click on the attendance detail section, that will collapse that section. If I ex click on the phone list, that will expand that section. So you can see that we have details for the student's guardians. Uh, going back to the attendance detail section, when I click on that, it will collapse the phone list section and expand the attendance details section. What I'd like to do now is I'm just going to very quickly create an attendance record for this student. You can see that existing attendance records are listed in this uh, details section. I can view them by scrolling up and down. We've um, streamlined the attendance, the individual attendance process a little bit um, so that we've removed the generate attendance button that exists in Core Trillion. That's that lightning bolt icon. Um, we no longer have that need within the application. To create a record, just simply click on the Add button. And the Attendance detail section will expand up here to show all of the information we need to create the attendance records. Um, when we create the record, begin by choosing an attendance date. Now this can be a single date or it can be a date range. Um, I will just choose the default, but when I click in the attendance date field, notice that the calendar control here pops up. So you can select a value 
from the calendar, or you could just simply type it in if you prefer. Once you've entered an attendance date or dates, select your attendance code from the report as drop down box. Select your entry mode and your period. And I will choose uh, select in as a reason. We have the communication details boxes here. You can check phone if communication, uh, phone communication occurred between the um, guardians and the school. If you received a note regarding the student's attendance record and this check box if the student must see uh, an administrator regarding his or her attendance patterns. These are uh, essentially the same as what you would see in Court Trillium. You can also um, add a comment to the student's record and once you've entered the uh, desired information just simply click on the save button. The student's record will be saved and added to the attendance records that already exist. If uh, necessary, you can make some basic changes to the information and resave the record. Note that uh, if you make a change that will overwrite an existing attendance record, you will be given the option of overwriting the attendance record or records or um, keeping the existing records. If you want to delete it, uh, learn more records, simply click on the uh, records to be deleted. You can use the checkbox at the top of the column to select or deselect all records at once. I'll select the record that I just created, click on the delete button. I'll get a confirmation asking me if I want to confirm the deletion. In this case, I'll say yes, and the record will be deleted. Note that uh, deletion is permanent and can't be undone. Uh, one other thing that I want to point out uh, with respect to this module is that functionality has been expanded to allow for multiple attendance records for non-instructional days. From um, here, we'll now have a look at the class group attendance function. And those of you who are familiar with the Core Trillium Attendance Module will notice that uh, this is very similar with just a, a couple of minor differences. You'll notice that the calendar control that is always on the screen within Core Trillium has been removed. It's now been moved to the Attendance Date field. Start by selecting a track. If you have one or more tracks, select the track with which you want to work from the drop-down list. I only have one track, so that one's selected by default. By clicking in here, once again, you'll see the calendar pop-up that will come up. Um, I'll just leave it to the currently selected day. Excuse me. In the Select by Options here, you'll select the class or group for which you'll be recording attendance. I'm going to change the option to class, and I'm going to select uh, this first class in the list. Now, once you've done this, you need to click on the search button to retrieve the students who are in that class or group. In the attendance list, you can see the students who are attached to that uh, selected class or group. The information is shown in this thin gray bar up here. You can see that this is the attendance list for this particular class, track, and this attendance date. Select your attendance codes up here. I'll leave it uh, set to the uh, current values of absent all day. Um, we'll make it an unexcused absent. Once again, I'll just enter a test comment. Once you've selected the attendance values, select the students for whom you will be creating the attendance records. I will select the first two in the list. And this is a, a two-step process. First of all, once you've defined all of your attendance options, select your students, then click the Apply Values to Selected button. That will take the attendance defaults that I've defined and will enter them into the applicable fields for the selected students. 
as you can see that I've done here. If you need to make some minor changes, you can do that before you actually save. And once you've done that, click on the Save button. And it should create the attendance records. Now, why have we not... Let me go back to the first day of the school year. Lise, are you still there? I've lost Lise. Okay, I need to figure out now why it's not actually created the, uh, the attendance records. Um, Let's yeah, that's prop that's I think that's that's what it is, but um, no matter let's go we'll do we'll go to this class here. So I'll just work with the uh, a class that's already been, for which attendance has been uh, created. Once you've uh, successfully created the attendance records, uh, you'll notice that a new icon will uh, um, appear next to the students for whom the attendance records have been created. In this case, I chose uh, Dina and Karen and I created uh, rec absent records for them. Click on the View Today's Attendance Details icon and it will bring up a pop-up window and it will show the attendance details for that selected student. So you can see that the student has been marked absent in all periods for all of um, all of her classes. And the same thing with uh, the second student, uh, Karen. The contacts button here similarly will bring up a view student contacts details uh, pop-up window that will show the uh, contact information for the students' um, contacts. Okay, so that uh, very quickly. Um, just gives an overview of the class group and the individual um, attendance modules. From there, we'll move over to the admit slips. Once again, you have the list here. You just select the student for, uh, with whom you want to work. I will just choose the uh, current student. If you click on, on this uh, admit slip history section here, it will expand to show uh, a history of any admit slips that have been generated and printed for the selected student. You can reprint admit slips by clicking on the reprint button. Here we can just very quickly create a new admit slip uh, for this particular student. And to do so, all I have to do in this case is just click on the print admin slip button and it will uh, create the record. And it will bring up the, uh, the uh, print admin slip. Now, there's been a, a slight change with printing admit slips with this application. Uh, unfortunately, due to te uh, technical constraints, it wasn't possible to have the application select a default admit slip printer like it was possible to do within Core Trillium. So when you are printing an admit slip, you actually have to select the printer.
from within the print dialog. So it adds uh, one step to the pro uh, process. But as I mentioned, this was a technical consideration that um, for which there was no solution. Uh, so there's, there's nothing really more to be said about that. Calendar profile. This gives the ability to look Yes, if I could ask that that, um, that people would put their phones on mute. The, what, was, there, was there a question about the chat box? If there are no questions um, about the, the technical considerations of, uh, as long as people are able to see the presentation and uh, enter uh, information into the chat box, then we'll, we'll proceed from there. Uh, as I mentioned, if you uh, are having trouble with the chat box with a question and you can't enter that information in, then just please send me an email with your question and I'll include that with the questions that come through in the, the question and the chat pane. The calendar profile gives um, users the ability to see the um, students' attendance records in one of three views. We have a month view, we have a week view, and we have a day view. The Today button will take you to the current day, and you can use the scroll buttons here to scroll through the selected view. So here I am scrolling through in week view, or I can scroll through in month view. The attendance records are shown as colored entries on a particular day. And in order to bring up the information for that uh, attendance record, simply click on it. And it will bring up the attendance details for that selected record of records within this pop-up window. You can also see that uh, any contacts that have occurred between the uh, student and an attendance counselor will be indicated in this pop-up window as well. And this is just simply a read-only uh, function to give you a, an idea or, or a quick way of viewing these students' attendance records. Moving to the counselor contact page, this is where the uh, attendance counselor has the ability to create records um, for any contacts that have occurred between the counselor and the individual student. Uh, once again, it's very, this one is very simple to use. Click on the Add button, select the date of the contact, enter um, the necessary information, and Click on the Save button and it will be saved. Uh, if you want to delete something, once again, just simply click on it, to, uh, select it, and then click on the Delete button. The Bus Manifest uh, Exemptions page gives you the ability to uh, report to students uh, who ordinarily would take the bus, but who do not, uh, for some reason or another, or won't be taking the bus on a certain day. To use this, click on the Add button, and this will bring up a fine window that uh, will let you search for the student or students for whom you'll be recording the uh, information. We have uh, options for searching by surname, first name, middle name, birth date, uh, OEM student number, gender, and grade, and you'll see that that's very similar to the advanced find that we have in the individual student uh, individual student. Sorry, individual student page. The results are shown in the student results list up to a maximum of 10 at a time. If you have more than 10, then you can use these buttons here 
to scroll through the results. Select the student or student. And then click on the OK button. Once you've added your students and entered any necessary comments, just click on the Save button. And the last thing in the attendance module um, are the validation tables. We have two validation tables. And these are reason by attendance. And uh, this is quite simple to use. Simply select your absence code, click on the edit button, and make the necessary changes. The other uh, validation table that we have in here is the reason table. Now once again, you can create your, uh, your reasons in here um, and date them and so on, just as you would in Core Trillium. Uh, all the validation tables, just like the core trillion functionality, will eventually be ported over to the application, so they will all be accessible through Trillium Web. The next thing that we'll look at is the incident tracking module. That's the second of the two modules, as I mentioned, that have been included in this. This consists of two sections, Find Incident and Add Incident. The Find Incident section is used to find uh, an existing incident in order to modify the information. And it's also intended to be used to locate or find uh, incidents to make sure they don't exist so that you don't create uh, inadvertently create duplicates. Um, we have Two options for searching by name, preferred and legal. You've seen this before. We can search, um, we have several free text entry fields that you can use to search for surname, first name, middle name, only end, student number, and incident date. And the last four search fields do not accept direct input. Rather, they allow you to search by making a choice from a pre-selected list of values. If you prefer to search for all incident records within the database, leave all of these search fields empty and click on the Find button. We can see here that no results have been found based on your search criteria. Now, I never mentioned it before, but I'll do so now. If you have access to more than one school, then you can select the school for which you'll be working, uh, be it either attendance, this will work in the attendance module, or in the incident tracking module. And uh, people with the correct uh, proper security privileges will also be able to select the school year. I'll just work in the currently selected school and uh, school year. So once you've either determined that no record exists, or um, if there are records, well, actually, in this case, because I have no records, I can't select an existing one. So what I need to do is I need to click on the Add Incident button. These four fields here, the asterisk next to a field indicates that that is a required field. And you must enter information into that field. If you don't put information into the field and try to save the record, we'll wait for it. Terminal. You'll get an error message here that, that will tell you that this is a mandatory field and it cannot be empty. So I will change this to an incident location. Now, of all of these fields here, only the description field is uh, optional. Um, so I will just leave this blank, but you would probably want to enter in uh, the uh, necessary information. Once again, I'll click the Save button. And it's going to save that incident. You can see the details up here, the date, the time, 
the location, and an incident ID has been assigned to this particular incident. Now I've been taking, taken from the Find Add Incident screen to the Participant Details screen. Here I'll need to add one or more participants who are uh, involved with this, this particular incident. To start with, I'll click on the Add button, and this will bring up a search screen. I can search for several, incident, several uh, participant types. I can search for a student, a staff, a contact, or other. Other is intended for participants who are not contained in the Trillium database. You would have uh, your students, your staff, and your contacts contained in the database, but there might be uh, other people who are not contained in the database. That gives you the option to create records for those. I'm going to simply stick with a student. Once again, you'll see the very familiar uh, search options here. I'm going to search for student, and I'll just pick the student I've been working with throughout here, throughout the session. Select the student and click on OK. Once again, you can see the student's uh, photo up here and details pertaining to the selected student. We have several sections. We have the role details section. We have the infraction section, a history of incidents, progressive discipline, and personal and demographics. Uh, some of these are read-only. For example, the personal demographic section is read-only, and other sections are intended for you to record information. Up here you can record um, a participant injury, the participant's role, follow-up date and time with the parent and guardian, uh, name of individual with uh, whom uh, the school had contact, this brings up a quick pop-up window with the contacts information. Enter the details, follow-up recommendations. Once you've entered the necessary information, simply click on the Save button. As you add participants through the, this process, you'll notice that their names will be added to the participant details list. I'll very quickly add a second participant, in this case. I will add a staff member. And you'll notice that the staff member's information shows up in the participant uh, list. Going back to the students, I'll continue um, fleshing out the infraction record. I'll expand the infraction uh, detail. Select uh, consequence. Fill in the information. We have sections for consequence. These will uh, let a comment this information appears on the uh, infraction letter or the, the uh, letter of suspension or expulsion. Consequences, section for violent uh, incident, um, the appeal status, and so on. Now, as I mentioned, this is intended to be a very brief and quick overview of um, the functions and features. I, I'm not going into any of this information in any great detail. History of incidents, once again, this is read-only. Expand this to see uh, incident records that uh, are associated with this particular student. Progressive discipline section. Click on the Add button and uh, fill in the necessary information. Click Save. And that, very quickly, is an overview of the participant, uh, participant details section. Incident details. We have, once again, the uh, details for this incident, the ID, the date, and so on. Uh, description. 
if it was entered, would appear here. In order to use one of these sections, you'll notice that the fields are grayed out, with the exception of a staff name. The rest of these are grayed out. In order to make these accessible, you would simply just check the checkbox and enter the necessary information. For example, in the case of a violent incident, the police would need to be contacted, so you would need to open up this section by checking the checkbox and filling in the proper information. Validation tables. We have several validation tables for working with incident tracking, a field status, the incident um, CC names that would appear on the letter, infraction types. Of course, we have the uh, ministry and um, board defined infraction types. And this is very similar to what you would see within Cortrillium, incident injuries. These are just essentially the same validation tables, but they've been moved to the web application to make them accessible here. Incident roles and incident support and strategy. The last thing that we need to look at for the incident tracking module is preferences. And here we have preferences that would affect the way that the incident tracking module looks and functions. For example, if we check that, we would display the uh, behavior scale. And uh, we have these other options as well, include the CCs on the letters, number of days for the appeal, and so on. Now, throughout the application, you'll notice the existence of these little question mark buttons. These buttons will access the online help that I, I discussed early in the training session. The help is basically context sensitive. In other words, if you click on a button when you're viewing a particular page, it will jump immediately to the help for that particular page. Because I'm looking at the preferences page, it's going to bring up the help section for the preferences and it's going to give me a description of the, uh, the preferences. If I go to a slightly different page, then it should invoke the help for that specific page here. So now that I'm viewing the incident details page, it's going to give me comprehensive information about the fields on the page and how they should be used. If I click on the Show button here, then it opens up the Help Index. You can see that the online help here is organized according to modules. So we have help for the landing page, we have help for admin attendance, and we have help for incident tracking. And we can uh, view any of these sub-menu items simply by clicking on one of them and bringing up the specific details. You can also search the index by using a particular search term. And we have a free form entry, uh, search entry in, uh, box in here as well. So that essentially covers the, uh, the online help. The next thing that we'll look at is the reporting system. Now, as I mentioned, um, SRB has licensed the Jasper uh, report system that allows um, not only SRB to create reports and attach them to the Trillium web module, but it also allows boards to create their own custom templates and uh, give users access to those within Trillium web itself. So I'm going to leave the application very briefly just to have a look at the Jaspersoft Home menu. This is the dashboard that um, admin personnel would use to create the, the reports and the templates. Uh, there's a section here for creating data sources to connect to the database. We also have sections for uh, creating ad hoc views. The section down here is probably what most people is interested in, is creating the reports. Now, I'm not going to dive into this 
because it's not intended as a, a comprehensive training section on how to create reports. We do have some documentation in the installation guide, Jasper reports uh, installation guide on how to report, sorry, uh, create um, basic reports. Uh, this is just to show you the, the kind of functionality that JasperSoft has and its ability to create custom reports. So I'll flip back to Trillium Web. And now I will click on the report system. My apologies for this. This comes up from time to time. Uh, it's just that we haven't quite sorted things out within um, our training environment. Those of you who have used um, our generic letter writer will see that this is uh, arranged very similarly. On the left hand side we have folders in which the reports are organized and on the right hand side we have the report uh, repository. Right now within the attendance folder we have two reports here. We have the administration list and the attendance not recorded uh, report. Within incident tracking, we have the student incident report and we have the suspension violent incident uh, form. You can see the description of the report, what it's for, the type, the date it was created, and the modified date. We have buttons up here for running, editing, open, copy, uh, copy cut, and paste, and so on. These are controlled uh, within the JasperSoft, excuse me, admin panel. And uh, whoever creates the report has the ability to give these functions, attach these functions to the reports and to certain users. Right now, these are read only. What I'll do now is I will render this report here, the attendance not recorded report. I'll click on it to run it. And when it's open, we'll discuss some of the functionality that uh, is contained within the report. What I have here is basically a parameter pop-up window. The first parameter here, the start date is mandatory. So I need to enter a start date. For this I'll just go back to the beginning of the school year, September 2nd, and I will enter the current date as an end date. This will give me a, a large range of information so I can demonstrate the functionality of the report. This is also mandatory here, the blocks. So I will Click on this option here to select all the blocks, and once I fill in my parameters, I can actually generate the report by clicking on the OK button. Up top here, I can see the report name, I can see the date and time at which the information was retrieved. If uh, there have been some changes and you want to get the latest information, you can simply click on this. This is the refresh button. You can see that it's refreshing the report. Underneath, we have the uh, navigation buttons. I'm looking at page 1 of 31 for this report. I can page through the report one page at a time, or I can put in a value and jump specifically or directly to that page. So now I'm back on page 1. These buttons here, um, I'll describe these, the function of these buttons as I get through the, the session. Right now I've rendered the report on screen and we have some actually some very um, neat features for this. We have these headings here, dates, class, blocks, attendance teacher, room, web attendance teacher. We can apply uh, formatting, some basic formatting and conditional formatting features to this report by clicking on one of the headings. I'll actually uh, choose the second heading here, class. Notice when I select 
a particular heading, I get this little pop-up here that contains these buttons here. The first one allows me to hide a particular column or apply formatting. Um, if I don't have any values within a particular field, I can hide it so that it doesn't show up at all. I don't appear to have any values for the web attendance teacher, so I might want to hide that by clicking on Hide Column. The report refreshes, and now the column has been removed from the report. If I want to show the column, I can do so by just selecting it from this list. And now you can see that the report is refreshed and the column is back. I'll demonstrate now some of the uh, formatting features. The formatting is divided into two types. We have basic formatting and we have conditional formatting. Basic formatting can be applied either to the column headings or to the actual um, detail rows. In this case, I will just leave it at um, heading. I'm dealing with the class heading. I can change the font type. I can change the font size. I can change the font style. I can change the alignment. I can change the fill and I can change the color simply by changing any of these values. In this case, I'll just simply change the color from black to red. Click on the OK button. And you can see that that change has been applied to this particular column heading. Once you apply changes to the report, these buttons up here become active. The undo and the undo all. If you've applied a bunch of changes and you want to revert the report to its default view, just simply click on one of these buttons. I'll click on the undo all. It will refresh and it will revert the report back to its default view. Now, as I mentioned, on the basic formatting, you have the option to apply uh, these formatting options to the heading or to the detail text itself by changing this option here. So now, I'll just apply a change to the detail rows. And in this case, you can change the fill color. In fact, I will just change the font to, let's uh, pick blue. Hopefully that will be easy to see. I can change the alignment to center it. Click on the OK button. And now it's applied the change. Now, these um, examples I'm showing you are probably not very really practical. They're just designed to show you the kind of functionality that, uh, that is contained within the reports. Now we can actually expand the functionality to make it a, a bit more to make it a bit more powerful. Here you might want to apply conditional formatting to the report. You'll uh, want to highlight or hide or show certain values dependent on uh, meeting certain conditions. In this case, I want the detail rows to meet a certain condition. So I'll click on the Add button, and we have these conditional operators here. The values equal or are not equal to, contain, do not contain, start with, do not start with, end with, or do not end with. Uh, because I'm in the attendance teacher row here, um, let's pick a condition here where, uh, okay, let's say starts with J-O. So this condition, admittedly not, maybe not, not very uh, practical, but it will still give you a sense of, of um, the power of conditional formatting. 
any teacher's name who starts with the letters J-O, we will make red. Click on the Apply button or the OK button. And you can see that right now the teacher's name who meets that condition is James Joyce. And there may be other teachers who meet it, depending on how far I have to scroll through this. Right now it seems like James Joyce is the only one who meets that, that criteria. Uh, this, of course, would be more powerful if you're dealing with numerical uh, information. You might want to highlight certain values that uh, are greater than or less than a threshold value. If necessary, you can add additional um, conditions by clicking on the Add button. And you can add as many conditions and format them as much as you need. And these buttons here you can use to change the order of the conditions, which may or may not uh, change the order or how they're formatted, depending on how the conditions have been um, defined. To delete them, just simply click on the X button and the formatting goes away. Undo all of the changes, revert the uh, report back to its basic format. We also have the ability to filter the report based on certain values. Now the default is show all rows. I'm going to apply a filter to this where I'm going to get rid of James Joyce by simply putting in the name. starts with J-O and it will filter. Sorry, starts with. It will not get rid of because that's not how I defined my filter. I defined it so that I will filter based on starts with J-O. So in this case, it's going to show only James Joyce. And it's, of course, reduced the report to four pages because now I'm only showing one teacher. Once you have uh, defined your report, by applying your conditional formatting if desired or filters if desired. You can then export the report in one of many predefined uh, report formats. You can see that we have PDF, we have uh, paginated Excel, Excel, comma separated values, Microsoft Word Docx, RTF, and other um, file types here. For this example, I'll simply choose PDF. And it will open up the report in a separate PDF window. We'll shrink that now a bit. And of course, the Adobe PDF control bar shows up here and gives me the option to save the report, print the report, uh, page through it, and so on. This button here, the options, this simply brings up the input controls screen so that I can redefine the um, parameters and then rerun the report. And of course, it will, it will show differently depending on which values I choose here. To return to the report repository, click on the back button. And now I'm taken back to the folder repository view where I can select different reports, open up different folders, and select different reports and run them as necessary. And that essentially uh, wraps up the presentation. We've covered um, the basic features of the new Trillion Web uh, product. Uh, we covered the admin attendance module, the incident tracking module, reports, um, and the other functions contained within the system menu. Um, I hope that you 
you've uh, managed to put your questions into the question, the chat window or the question window, as I mentioned, I will be going through them. Uh, no doubt people will have a lot of questions, so I will be collating them and uh, uh, creating a document with answers to your questions. And uh, within hopefully the next couple of days, I will be getting that uh, out to everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending the training session, and uh, I wish you a uh, a happy rest of the day. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Are you still there?